Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Marcus and today in this video I will share with you how to design and animate this kinetic typography using Adobe After Effects. So let's go. The first thing is to create our new composition and let's name it kinetic type. And on the resolution let's make it 1080 by 1080 and leave it as square pixels at 30 frames per second at a 10 seconds duration and press OK. Great, our composition is done. So let's start with some design. Let's select the text tool and write something. It can be your name or something else you like. Be sure to select your favorite font too. In my case, I'm going to use Elvet Canu Regular. It's my to-go font. Then copy and paste and repeat it again. Nice. Now let's increase the text size to almost the exact same width of the composition. The idea is to increase the text size enough to overfill the composition. Cool. Now with our text layer selected, let's go to Layer, Precompose. Let's name our composition or just leave it with a layer name. Any of those options is ok. Now let's double click on our composition to see our text layer again. Let's select it and let's align it using the aligning tool. With that done, we can see that our composition is smaller than our text layer. So we need to adjust it so it doesn't crop our text when we animate it later. So to solve that problem, let's change our composition settings. So let's go to Composition, Composition Settings and let's increase the height until we can see our text fully and press OK. Now let's click on our little flow chart icon to return to our main composition. Our text here isn't fully visible, we have some cropped parts, but that's OK. The idea is to apply the distortion into this composition layer, making the composition fully visible later. So don't worry. But before that, let's go to Layer, New, Solid. And on the solar settings, we don't need to name it, it will only be a quick reference for the next step and we will delete it soon, so don't get too attached. Anyway, let's make this solid 200 pixels by 200 pixels and choose a lovely color. Just make sure it contrasts with the color of the background and the typography. And press OK. Great, now what we want to do is to create some guidelines. This will help us with the position of the distortion effect that we'll apply next. So let's activate our rulers. If you can see them, we can make them visible on View, Show Rulers, perfect. And from the ruler, let's push our first guideline. The idea is to make them all around the composition and our reference solid. So let's do it very quickly. Sometimes it's tricky to make it perfect, but we can always zoom in and out just to ensure it matches the pixel. And with that done, let's go back to view and lock guides. This is important so we avoid accidentally moving them. And as I told you before, now we can delete the solid. Now it's the time we have been waiting for. We are going to apply some distortion and animation into our text. Let's start with the distortion. With our text composition selected, let's press the S key to open the scale property. And let's scale the text down a little bit. Then let's go to Effects, Distortion and Corner Pin. This will create some pins on edges of your composition, letting us manipulate the corners and marking keyframes, which will result in them moving. Cool, right? And next, we will use the intersection of the guidelines we've made before to help us with the position of the pins. So let's do it. Select the bottom pins first and match them with their respective position. And do the same for the top one. And then we just need to duplicate this layer three times, rotate it around and we fill the entire composition. But before we do that, let's apply some movement to our text. So let's select our text comp and double click to go inside it once more. Select our text layer and let's go to a top menu, Effects, Stylize, Motion Tile. This is one of my favorite effects. It tiles any layer and lets you animate the tiles very quickly. It's an excellent tool for kinetic typography projects. Now with our motion tile applied, let's ensure our timeline needle is on frame 0. And let's click on a stopwatch on the tile center, marking our first keyframe. Then let's move our timeline needle to the last keyframe and go back to our motion tile effect and on a tile center value, let's click on it and do some basic maths. Let's use a current value there and multiply it by 7, making sure the animation loops perfectly. Now press spacebar on numpad 0 to preview it. Nice. Let's go back to our main composition and preview it here too. And it's looking great. Now let's duplicate our text composition 3 times, so we can fill the entire composition with text. For that, let's select our composition layer and go to Edit duplicate until you have three new copies perfect now select our new composition copies and press the r key to open the rotation property of the layers and on the first copy 
let's make the rotation value 90 degrees. On the next one, let's make it 180. And on the last one, 270. Cool, right? Now we have this great kinetic typography effect. I love this visual. I love kinetic type in general. And using typography combined with movement is just amazing. And the next thing we're going to do is to create some null objects combined with some simple expressions to control all the corner pins in one go. So yeah, let's go, let's do this. First, let's activate our toggle mask and shape path visibility. Sometimes it turns off for no reason, but we need it so we can see our corner pins. Great. Then let's select our first layer and click on a little square to solo it. And now let's go to the top menu and select layer, new, null object. Then let's click on a new layer and press enter to name this null and let's call it main control. As this null will be the main null for all the other nulls, he needs a cool name. And to ensure it's a distinguished null, let's give him a different color as well. This will help a lot when we have more nulls in the scene. Anyway, let's make a couple more nulls, the same process as before. And these new nulls, let's name them 1 and 2 and give them cool colors. Perfect, now let's position them at the intersection of the center guidelines. Uh, great, our nulls are positioned, and now we just need to connect the corner pins to them. So the next step is to select our nulls 1 and 2 and press P so we can see the position properties. And then let's select our text layer and press E to open the effects applied to the composition. And let's click on the little arrow to expand it. Here we can see our four pins and their position value. And for this tutorial, you only need to work with the upper left and right pins, which is great, fewer things to link around. So let's connect things up. Let's use the pick whip tool and connect the upper left corner pin to the null on its exact position. And guess what? It doesn't work. It moved the pin away and that's not what we want. Well, I knew about this, but I just wanted to show it to you. But don't you worry, I have a quick workaround using expressions. So while holding the Alt key, click on the little stopwatch by the upper left pin to open the expression editor. And here is where we're gonna write a very minimal expression. We're gonna also reuse it later for all the other pins that we need to connect. So let's start. First, let's create a variable and let's name it A. And let's say A equals our null one. So using the pick whip tool, let's select the null one. Then let's write another line. Then let's write from comp to surface. After Effects will notice what you are writing and we'll give you some recommendations and maybe finish it for you, which is great, saves you some milliseconds there. Then inside of the parentheses, let's write A period to comp. And then again, inside of a parenthesis of the two comp line, open brackets and write 0, comma, 0, comma, 0, and close brackets. And on the end of the line, just put a similar column. Now we can copy and paste this expression on the upper right corner pin and change the variable a, this time to refer to null2. Easy, right? And now we have corner pins that are controlled by nulls. Now let's select our nulls and parent them to the main control null. So the primary null controls these nulls and all the other ones we're gonna create next. Perfect. Let's unsolo this layer so everything is visible again and let's select another typography comp and repeat the same process. I will make it quicker this time, but I will keep all the steps to ensure you get everything. So let's go. First, select your text composition and make it solo. Then go to layer and create two new nulls name them 3 and 4 and give them some nice colors. Then position them in the intersection of the center guidelines where your composition corner pins are placed to. Open the composition effects, select the upper left corner pin, copy the expression used before, paste it and update the variable A with a new respective null. Repeat the same thing for the upper corner pin, update the expression with the respective null and bam. Connect nulls 3 and 4 to the main control null and that's it and solo it so you can see all of it again. Cool, the following two text compositions I will speed it up. By now, I believe you got the process and you can always return to the video if you miss something. So yeah, time for five to 10 seconds of a screen time lapse with great lo-fi music. Cool, it's all set up. The primary null now has total control of all the other corner pins. But before we animate, let's lock, hide and shide all the other nulls to keep our timeline tidier. This way we can only see and move the main control room, which is what we need. 
Great, so let's move our timeline needle to the first frame, select our primary control null and press P to open the position properties and mark our first keyframe. Let's move the timeline needle again and change the position somewhere else and let's keep doing this until we have a few keyframes. And for the last keyframe, let's copy the first one and paste it on the end of the timeline. So the movement loops nicely. For this type of loop animation, I like to have my keyframes equally spaced, which makes the animation more structured and with a nice rhythm. But doing that by hand is quite a pain and time consuming. So I've developed a script that does that. I call it Spacium. I rarely need it, but sometimes I do, and when I do, I'm glad I have it. I'm selling it for $3 in my online shop, but you can get it for free by joining my Buy Me A Coffee page. And besides getting this script for free, you also will get access to all the working files of my previous tutorials and the new ones, of course, like this one you're watching right now. And even more, you will have access to all my design products, like my isometric pack, and also a members-only Discord channel, where you can share your work with me and all the other members. It's an excellent way to get feedback and improve your skills and portfolio. And of course, by joining my Buy Me A Coffee page, you will be helping me as a creator, allowing me to dedicate more time to create content and design products. And the best part is, all of this for only $1 a month, or $10 a year. My goal is to make it as affordable as possible. So yeah, I will leave the link on the video description and let's go back to the tutorial. So my keyframes are equally spaced and my animation is looping. Happy days! So it's time for some minor keyframe speed adjustments and we will be done, for the most part. So let's do that. Let's open our graph editor, select all of our keyframes and change them to easy and easy. Let's push the anchor points to make a more dramatic curve, giving our animation a little bit more personality. Then click again on the graph editor to close it and let's press spacebar on numpad 0 to preview our animation and yeah, amazing, right? I love this kinetic type motion. But if you still have a couple of more minutes and are not too bored by this video by now, we can make a few more keyframes to make this stand even more. I promise, I'll make this quick. First, let's go to our project tab, then select our main composition and go to edit and duplicate. So we have two versions. Cool, now let's click on a new version and start our quick experiment. So you see, we have keyframes only on a position of the main node. But what would happen if we added keyframes on a rotation and on a scale of the null. The result is awesome. So yeah, let's do it. Select our null and press R for rotation and click on the stopwatch to mark our first keyframe. Let's leave it at zero rotation, move the timeline a little, little bit and use a random value here. And let's do it again for a few more times and cool. But remember to make the last keyframe the same value as the first one, which is zero. Cool, let's preview it. Nice. I told you it gives another layer of coolness to the motion. I like it. It's probably too much, but I think it's cool. Ok, let's do the same thing with the scale property. Select the main null, press S for scale. First keyframe, let's leave it at 100% and then let's make a few more of them. And I will use the spatial script again, amazing script by the way, to space all of these keyframes equally on a timeline. Nice, now let's go back to the graph editor to adjust the speed of these keyframes. Let's preview it, and amazing. Yeah, maybe a bit too crazy now, but I think it's worth it the experiment. Well, that's it. Let's add these two versions to our render queue, make it a H.264 export, so we can have it a MP4 ready to play and post in our social media channels. Press render, and that's it. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed and learned something cool. And remember to like and subscribe, and again, please consider supporting this channel with only $1 a month or only $10 a year. That's it. Thank you so much. Have a good day, a good life, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye-bye.